I think this is gonna be the first time that I'm going to talk positively about Star Trek Discovery, so embrace yourself. Hello Trekkies, welcome back with another Trekker Prize video and we're talking about the 11th episode of Star Trek Discovery, The Wolf Inside. Um, well, I just happened to watch the episode and um, I liked it! I had some reservation from the previous episode um, and um, yeah, I wasn't really happy with a couple of things and I had to rethink quite a lot about you know my reactions and, and how the episode was and what I felt with the episode. But this episode was really interesting, it was really cool. I really enjoyed every minute of it. Um, I'm not exaggerating this time, I really enjoyed this episode. With all due respect of Jonathan Frakes, I enjoyed more the directorial style in this episode. It was uh, it's actually more movement. It was more like a, more like watching a movie, and it was really it was really cool. Finally, I got the answer for my question: Where the hell is uh, Saru in Discovery? Well, as it turned out, he is a slave in the Shenzhou. Basically, that's why he didn't change uniform. So, so there you go, mystery solved. It was really cool to see finally, you know, having this um, walk issue closed and, and case closed, no walk, no edge Tyler. Two personalities exactly the same and the two actor is the, exactly the same. Um, it's not just because Ash Tyler made a voice uh, over of, uh, you know, he started to talk as walk. It was uh, it was actually him. And I noticed in that battle scene between walk and Ash Tyler, there was something strange with the CG in that point. I mean, obviously they they use doubles and you don't need to be a graphic designer to or an RTG effect expert to actually see okay there was something um, wrong with that effect so but yeah mystery solved case closed Ash Tyler and Book is the same person and obviously the actor is the same as well just with the makeup and it was kind of obvious from the very beginning come on it was really refreshing and cool to see the aliens in this episode as well we got to see the Andorians we got to see the Tellarites we got to see more Klingons and we got to see Mirror Sarek. So we got to see Mirror Sarek as well, and Mirror Sarek was uh, somewhat different than I thought. He was much closer to the Prime Sarek that um, we got to know from the original series or from the previous episodes from Lethe, for just to mention one. I really enjoyed Michael Burnham's uh, realization as well in this episode when actually she uh, realized, okay, hang on, we are still Starfleet. I know I don't have my rank pips and I don't have my rank anymore, but I'm still an explorer, I'm still a Federation officer, I'm still a Starfleet officer, and I still seek for peace. And what the Rebellion does in the Mirror Universe is basically what the Federation does in the Prime Universe. And it was a really interesting comparison. It, it really gave back a bit of hope um, towards Discovery and towards the series. Um, there we have Captain Lorca, who might have been uh, confirmed he's from the Mirror Universe as well. Again, the enjoyment is just going on. I really enjoyed seeing the scene when um, Captain Tilly, Captain Tilly, she started to actually work on how to uh, heal Stamets with the spores and it was a really... Uh, at one point she reminded me of Captain Janeway. Um, I saw Captain Janeway in Captain Tilly. I know I shouldn't but <laughs> it was really cool to actually see um, Captain Tilly and, and Tilly's um, opinion on the whole and the whole explorational part. Like okay hey I can do this. She was more sciencey than before. She was more engaging and she was more mature than ever she was in the show. And I think Discovery in this episode in particular will find his own voice. So it, it didn't really rely on, on previous incarnations and didn't really have uh, that much information from other Star Trek series. But this felt, for me at least, this felt more Star Trek than it was before. And I think mainly because I've got this um, positive, um, optimistic side from Burnham, um, regardless of the exploration and, and bringing hope. Um, that's still in the sense of Starfleet and even we are in a different universe we still have to be ourselves we should not lose ourselves even the circumstances are challenging us and that really comes back to the first episode that I always mention and this was for me that's one of the best episodes from chapter one the first episode because that's still placed in this hopeful universe that we got to know as Star Trek so we got thrown out from our comfort zone from the first episode and from this moment and um, <clears throat> maybe we're gonna find ourselves back in the in the right place again uh, hopefully I'm really hope in the following episodes we're actually gonna catch up with more and more uh, positive hopeful uh, message that Star Trek was always about and obviously the big secret the faceless emperor uh, finally revealed herself himself herself herself uh, yes um, not a big secret anymore Captain Filippo Giorgio aka Emperor Giorgio uh, came back um, now 
as I much I enjoyed seeing Michelle Yeoh uh, coming back in this episode and she will be in the next episode too so I'm really excited to see her again even in this evil form the CG of her was terrible she, they showed her from a close point and, and somehow her head just looked off from, from the body I don't know if it was me or for all of you but somehow it didn't fit um, with how we got to know uh, Captain Georgia before maybe because of the big costumes, I, I don't know but it was really interesting to see her um, back in um, back in Star Trek Discovery. I'm really looking forward to see the next episode and uh, get to know more about her, more about her mirror self. And the last part that got me really intrigued going forward with this episode is Lieutenant Stamets. Now Lieutenant Stamets trapped into this um, realm of his own uh, in his um, brain network, mycelial network inside of his head. Again, that was a really interesting part that actually started to explain how and what's uh, going on in his head. So, um, him walking through the mycelial network and seeing his mirror self, I'm kind of thinking he's meeting his mirror self through the mycelial network because his mirror self has the same issue in the Prime Universe, in the Mirror Discovery, the original Mirror Discovery that he has in the Prime Discovery. So maybe at the end of the day they were gonna figure out how they can actually get back in their place and how the, the USS Discovery can go back to Prime Timeline and the Mirror Universe Discovery can go back to the Mirror Universe. So I'm really curious to see what's gonna happen with, with them as well. So. Overall, it was a really damn good episode. Um, I was thrilled. I was. Um, I had a, all sorts of emotions going on, but I, I, I did enjoy myself. I think the first time ever I did enjoy myself watching Discovery, apart from the first episode. And um, and it's a really good uh, direction. If the show and in the episodes and the writing and directorial methods will go in in the same way how it actually went in this part. And with all due respect to Jonathan Frakes, but I think this episode was better in terms of uh, direction. Um, I'm looking forward to see um, more episodes of Star Trek Discovery, and and I'm more positive now than I was in the previous episode. I had like issues and stuff, and and as I said, if you watched the Star Trek Boy podcast before, you might know um, I wasn't really um, happy about the whole episode. But but now thinking about my last review and thinking about what I've seen in this episode, I'm just thrilled. And I'm really looking forward to what's gonna uh, come in next week. So um, that was me for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know in the comment section below what did you think about this episode, what was your favorite or least favorite moment, and what did you expect or what do you have any theories for the following episodes. And as always, don't forget to like and share the video, and don't forget to subscribe to receive all the geekiness every week. And until next time, long live the Empire!